do you own an Airbnb or short-term rental or you're someone who stays in them throughout the year? Well, over the last two years, I've lived in, I don't know, 15 or 16 different countries, mostly in short-term rentals. And I have to say, not all of them are created equal. There's a few things that you can add to every single property, or if you're staying in them, things you can look for that are going to make your stay just that much better and really just don't cost that much. So in this video, I'm gonna go through four things that I think are absolutely necessary for any of the long-term stays you're gonna be in. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, well, welcome back to the Lifting Nomad. My name is Alex and like I said in this video I want to go through four things that I think are really really important to finding in a short-term rental whether you're hosting them whether you're looking to stay in one and this is coming from someone who's been nomadic the last couple of years so just a little bit of I guess uh social proof about what I'm talking about. Uh, ever since January of 2022, I've been nomading kind of around the world from Colombia to Argentina to Portugal to Mexico to summers back home in Toronto. And all of my shit's been in storage at my mom's house for the last couple of years. So I've been living just pretty much out of a suitcase and this um, camera setup that's going on behind the scenes here. And it's let me kind of get insight into what I think is worth having in these short-term rentals, what is something you should look for while you're looking online, and what are the things that are actually gonna make your stay more enjoyable. So first thing, you know, before I even get started, I wanna acknowledge obviously the obvious. Um, I am like a digital nomad slash remote worker. Uh, I think nomad is kind of like a little cringy, but basically I stay for a very long time in a lot of these places, typically one to three months at a time. So, you know, maybe it's not gonna be as important for you if you're just going away for like a weekend trip or like a wedding or something like that where you're one or two nights, maybe you're gonna I'm gonna be falling asleep drunk anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But for me, a lot of the times I'm there for an extended period of time and having these uh, little things actually goes a long way to letting me stay more comfortable in my surroundings, being more productive with work, keeping my fitness and my nutrition dialed in for an extended period of time. So without further ado, I think the, uh, obviously, you know, having Wi-Fi is super, super important and it should be basically the best internet that you can buy in that area. Last summer, I was staying at a house uh, here in Toronto that actually had really, really bad internet, which is kind of, you know, ironic I think at this day and age where pretty much gigabyte internet is available everywhere it doesn't really cost that much more I know our telecoms here in Canada are, are literally the most expensive that any country pays in the world from the last thing I saw but it's really not that much more to get like the good internet versus getting the shitty stuff that is just going to make it that much better for people who are looking to work looking to maybe like stream movies or if they're a student like looking to do their schoolwork, like whatever that may be internet is kind of a necessity so that's not even something I'm going to consider the first thing is actually going to be blackout curtains. And this is ironically something that I buy at a lot of the Airbnbs I stay in if they don't have them, simply because it's that valuable for me to have a good night's sleep. And blackout curtains go a long, long way to doing so. It's been proven, you know, lots and lots of studies have proven this, that the darker the room, the colder the room, likely the better the sleep is going to be for that person. I don't know why some places I've seen where they A, don't have blackout curtains or B, don't have curtains at all. And it's just like mind blowing that they just, you know, as the sun comes up, you just get blasted. Or if you're in somewhere like a city like I am right now, the street lights just shine right into your window. You always have to worry about like walking around naked because you're inside, your window's open, someone can see you. It's It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me considering the cost. Uh, and really the cost of all the things in this video are gonna be pretty negligent. So it's a bit surprising every time I hear that this place doesn't have uh, blackout curtains and I do the nice thing of actually typically buying them and leaving them in my apartment. You can buy them on Amazon for like $30 for a set of blackout curtains for one window. There's really no reason to not have them. It's just gonna make you, you know, A, sleep better, B, not have to worry so much about people like looking in on you. The light is not gonna come in from the street. Overall, it's just gonna make that much better. So a lot of times I've been seeing on these Airbnb postings, they actually say blackout curtains in the bedroom. And then when you're looking at pictures, make sure to look at the windows, at the curtains. Is there light coming in? Is it gonna be too bright? Are you gonna get a good sleep? Or are you gonna be up all night pissed off that they don't have blackout curtains? We're gonna keep on this sleep theme here. The second thing I think is a good set of pillows. I've slept on some amazing beds from short-term rentals and I've slept on some absolute dog shit beds from short-term rentals. And one of the things that I think makes or breaks it is actually having a good set of pillows. It really, really is surprising to me when I see these apartments that are like, you know, multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars for the houses and the renovations and they get all this nice furniture and artwork and then they buy like $1, one feather pillows. Like you went into a department store, asked 
ask someone, you know, where are the good pillows? Okay, I want to go to the exact opposite end of that and I want four of those. It, you know, for the cost you're paying for pillows, it just, it doesn't really make sense why you wouldn't invest in like a little bit decent of pillows. I'm not saying you have to go out and buy like $500, like Tempur-Pedic ones or something like that. But at the end of the day, having at least two decent pillows on your bed is A, gonna make you sleep better. It's B, just gonna let you be more comfortable in your space. If you're like, you know, the room I'm in right now, there's a TV right here that's right at the foot of the bed. I'm typically in bed watching movies. So if I don't have good, t good pillows, I'm actually using mine from home at the apartment I'm in right now, simply because I I'm in Canada and I have a little bit more access to some of my supplies, but usually when I travel, I end up buying an extra set of pillows and leaving in that apartment. So something to look forward to and also like take a look at the pictures on the um, on the posting, are there decent pillows on the bed? Ironically, the Selena Hostels, uh, I, I, if you've watched this channel for a while, you've heard me talk about them before, huge, huge fan of Selena Hostels. They end up having some of the nicest pillows and nicest Nicest beds, nicest beddings I've ever seen of anything. So, you know, staying in a Selena hostel in a private, maybe not a bad bet. I did that in Cordoba, Argentina. Very, very cheap and an amazing setup. So maybe something to consider if you don't want to do the Airbnb, maybe a private in a Selena hostel is the next best bet. Okay, the actually the third thing is kind of like a two for one combo, but I'll put it to uh, put it to the test here. I don't know who came up with the idea of having a kitchen dining chair or something similar being used as an office chair. It's horribly uncomfortable. It's bad for your back. It's bad posture. They typically cost as much, if not more than a decent office chair. And there's just really no reason to have them. Again, because if you're a host, the typically the feet don't drag, so or they don't roll. So instead you have someone who's in that chair all day long, just dragging it back and forth, scratching your floor, because what else are we gonna do? We're gonna be in the chair all day long anyways, working. So when you're building the workspaces in these rooms, they don't have to be that elaborate. Like I've seen some you know, really fancy setups, trying to get like artistic with it, like literally just a decent sized desk that is at the proper height and a decent chair that's at the proper height and maybe it's height adjustable depending on how tall the person is. And then I would say to try it out. Like when you're shopping for these things, take a look at the store, sit down for a little bit and see if it's gonna be comfortable. If it is a dining room chair, that has no place being somewhere that someone's actually gonna be working out from an office from. So just something to keep in mind. And when you're looking for uh, options as a, as a guest, just take a look at the office space. If it says it has a dedicated workspace, sometimes that can be a little bit fugazi and if that's like an actual like dining room table in the kitchen, they can consider that a dedicated workspace for the sake of Airbnb. So make sure you're not getting misled, make sure you're going through the entire posting, you're actually able to see what that person's talking about and what it's gonna look like. Because again, if you're working out of that area for two months and you're at a place that isn't comfortable, it's just gonna ruin your back and you're not gonna be able to be as productive as normal. The last thing I think is probably the easiest and the biggest cheat code, and it's funny, I've traveled a few times with a company called Remote Years, and this is actually, Remote Year, excuse me, and that's actually one of their guarantees when you travel with them, is a fan. So a lot of places, you know, if it's gonna be warm, if it's gonna be hot, Aircon's likely not gonna work as well as it used to. Like I was in Buenos Aires, Argentina this winter and it was like 40 degrees some nights for two, three weeks at a time. And the aircon was just working on overtime trying to keep it cold. And I ended up going out and again, buying a fan, leaving it at my apartment. A fan is a super, super cheap investment. One of those like oscillating tower fans you can get for like $30, $40. And it's just gonna, again, provide some white noise. So if you're in a house that has multiple uh, multiple bedrooms or you have multiple guests at a time, it's just gonna block a little bit of that out so people can sleep a little better. It's gonna let them stay cooler. And it's just gonna be an overall better <laughs> experience for such a small investment. I don't know why some of these things get overlooked. I've stayed in too many of these apartments that don't have these things now that I think it's worth mentioning and it's you know it's it's something that everyone should have and it doesn't really cost a lot of money but has a huge ROI and the final thing I would say just kind of like an overall takeaway is the actual design and the aesthetic of the place is not nearly as important as the actual function of things like this like having a good place to sleep having a good place to work that is going to go light years further than having an aesthetic piece of art on the wall or some mirror in the bathroom that lets you you know stay your your whole body as a mirror or like fancy towels or stuff like you know we can make that work but really the, the most of our time is going to be sleeping most of our time is going to be working at a desk so if you're able to hit those two things you're going to have half your tenants you're going to have better reviews you're going to make more money from your airbnb and if you're a guest you're going to have likely a better experience in that place and overall just a better time while you're traveling so this was just my perspective what do you think did i miss anything was there anything you would add anything you would add differently that you think maybe i missed from this video <laughs> but that's pretty much going to be it if it was useful feel free to leave a like or a comment in the section below always helps the algorithm but as always my name is alex welcome back to the thing nomad we'll see you in the next one peace